Alex from Stratified here, and we have our, uh, where we've had our Mark 7R on the dyno over the last few days, and we want to take a vehicle that is relatively close to stock and put it through its paces and see how it behaves on different fuels. So first of all, let's take a look at the testing equipment here. So we have a MD150 Mustang dyno, and uh, this is a load control dyno. So you can see here is the eddy current brake for the dyno. It's right underneath this cover here. And why is it important to have a load control dyno like this is because when we run the car on the dyno, we are actually uh, representative or we're seeing representative behavior to what we see on the street. So if we do a third gear pull, uh, it's going to uh, behave uh, as though the vehicle is driven in third gear. If we do a fourth gear pull, it's going to behave as though it's uh, driven in fourth gear and so on. The majority of our pulls on this car uh, we've done in fourth gear and uh, then we did some stress testing in the fifth gear that uh, I'm going to cover uh, a little bit later in the video. So. Uh, this is a two-wheel drive dyno, as, as you've noticed, and the two-wheel drive dyno is fine on this vehicle because this vehicle has a clutch uh, coupling in the rear, and that clutch coupling, uh, part of the Haldex system, once decoupled, actually when the car is driving down the road, the majority of the time it is decoupled uh, for efficiency, makes it a two-wheel drive vehicle. So it's not like uh, we're reducing somehow the parasitic losses here uh, from the vehicle because uh, the, the clutch decoupling makes it possible to completely remove the rear end just like it is uh, driven the majority of the time and uh, and we can get very repeatable and accurate numbers with this vehicle to wheel drive so the way we've actually removed the uh, the rear coupling is that we've unplugged the Haldex unit from the back uh, I know there's some ways to do it via software uh, but we didn't want any surprises with the rear engaging uh, for whatever reason so the next bit uh, that you want to be careful with is cooling. So we have a number of these fans, they point right into the uh, inlet ducts of the vehicle. So you know the intercooler in this car is sandwiched between the uh, radiator and the AC condenser here in the, in the front. So we have these fans pointing uh, in there and making sure that uh, we're getting adequate cooling. Now, is it adequate cooling similarly to what you see in a fifth gear uh, on the highway? No, actually, you're going to get better cooling because of the, the air velocity is so high at those speeds. But for the sake of measurement uh, and, and for the sake of doing it in a safe manner, this is, uh, this is how we've chosen to do it. The uh, next bit is going to be how the engine bay looks. So, uh, like I said, it was a fairly basic setup to start with. So we're going to build up on this. Uh, we still have the uh, stock uh, air box here, the stock intake. It has a can and drop in filter and the IS38 turbocharger is stock. And you can see that we do have a downpipe uh, on there, you can see it right there, and we have actually a turbo back exhaust. So as far as uh, parts or uh, modification parts for this car at this point are just that turbo back exhaust, and you can see we have another video uh, with that. So let's have a look at some of the results and uh, discuss these. But before that, let's see what a dyno pull looks like in fourth gear. in our assembly room and uh, we're just uh, we're dyno just outside but we're remotely connected to the dyno and we can see some of the results and discuss them uh, from the Golf R. So keep in mind the Golf R only has a CTS turbo back exhaust and uh, th this is uh, catalyzed otherwise it just has a drop-in filter and we uh, we worked with uh, both pump gas and E30 fuels so let's have a look at how things looked. So first of all uh, let's pull up uh, just our pump gas results and um, you can see that, that the peak horsepower was uh, just above 330 horsepower and peak torque was about 364. Also uh, take a look at this, the final time, so the pull time was 7.85 seconds. So keep a look at that or keep an eye on that as we progress through because uh, you'll see um, a, a pretty cool uh, observation. Um, so let's put uh, this in a 
in a legible, as legible as possible manner. Uh, you can see that uh, the, the peak torque came in very early uh, in, in fourth gear. You know, let's put this by engine speed. So in fourth gear, uh, by about you know 2,900 RPM, uh, we had full boost. We had peak torque here. And uh, actually, this can happen even quicker the higher you go in, in gears. And that's the beauty of the, of the loaded dyno, because uh, when we did put it in fifth gear for some stress testing, which we'll go over later on, you can see that that spool goes up higher. Uh, and uh, other than that, uh, moving forward here, we can see that peak horsepower uh, happened just uh, just before 6000 RPM. Uh, a very nice and and long section of flat torque here that is from before 2000 oh sorry from before 3000 rpm and that torque stays flat to pretty much 5000 rpm so so this this car will pull nicely uh through the the mid range lower and uh and even the upper mid range and you have a bit of torque fall off up top as you start to lose a little bit of efficiency from the turbocharger and of course the fuel octane starts to step in. So let's compare this to what a pull look like on the stock calibration. So this is not a stock vehicle that we're bringing up here. This is a stock tune uh, on the modified car. And immediately what we noticed is that uh, on the stock tune, First of all, yes, obviously it, it makes less torque and, and less power, uh, but also the throttle is closing during the entire time uh, that we ran the stock tune. So uh, with the throttle closures, it means that, that the ECU is always fighting back the additional boost that the turbocharger was able to generate because uh, of the exhaust. So keep in mind, running stock tunes on modified vehicles, especially if you change out the exhaust, is not ideal. It's creating additional heat, uh, and uh, and it's also working the turbocharger harder than it, than it should be. The power, however, was was not too bad. Uh, it peaked torque at uh, 283 foot-pounds, and part of that, again, was just the turbocharger able to make uh, more boost, and even though the EC was fighting it, it did manage to get a little bit more than what we usually see on completely stock hardware, and uh, horsepower peaked around the 270 mark. So that's how things uh, looked uh, in comparison. So now we moved on to E30 fuel. So let's bring that up and show you uh, what it looks like um, on, on E30. So now on E30, we've jumped to 362 horsepower and 382 foot-pounds of torque. So also look at how much quicker the pull is now at 7.3 seconds uh, versus 93. So the car is going to be able to obviously accelerate faster through fourth gear uh, or any gear for that matter because of the additional, the additional power that was allowed uh, by the higher octane fuel. So very, very smooth pull. Uh, indicating that there's absolutely no no knock uh, interfering here. And let's have a quick look at how it looks like compared to um, our, uh, our 93 octane. So as you can imagine, uh, we, we gain power throughout, uh, throughout the entire uh, power band. And you can see here how much quicker this car reached the end of fourth uh, versus here, so uh, there's you know 7.3 uh, to about 7.8 seconds, so half a second faster to sweep through fourth or to accelerate through fourth gear uh, in with the E30 fuel. And when we put it in terms of engine speed again, you see the gains made uh, over uh, over the uh, 93 octane, and we're looking at about really about 30 horsepower, which is a really nice solid gain. And if we were to drop the OEM uh, calibration again, uh, we're really well, well above that. So if just some minor, minor calibration, or sorry, some minor bolt-on such as an exhaust, uh, and obviously the tuning changes, then you're looking at, you know, going from something like this car will probably dyno with just stock hardware somewhere in the 250, 260 horsepower range, and adding on, a hundred uh, wheel horsepower. 
So there's definitely uh, some major gains there. And the other thing that I really like is that we are able to, to get gains across the entire power band. So we shifted the entire power band up, uh, not just uh, created a peak torque here that, uh, that would fall off up top. So after this, we decided to do a little bit of stress testing and put this car in fifth gear. Now in fifth gear, uh, you're going to uh, build up a lot more heat. So let's see what that looks like on E30 in, in fifth gear. So here's the pull. And now we're talking about a pull that's taken 13 seconds to complete. So that's, that's significant there. Uh, there's a lot more load on the vehicle, uh, which is able to generate more boost. And now if we have a look at how that looks like, uh, we can see that the peak torque has jumped to 400, but the peak horsepower is actually coming in earlier. And if we pull up the fourth gear pull to compare, you can see that we've got earlier spool, just as I predicted, because we're loading the engine more and we're generating more exhaust energy. We're able to carry more torque again due to that additional load on the engine throughout. So we're able to hit that 400 foot pounds, just over 400 foot pounds of torque versus fourth gear. But up top, you can see that up top we're dropping horsepower a little bit. And the reason for that is because the intercooler, which is still stock, uh, got very, very warm uh, through this fifth gear pull. So if you're planning on doing, you know, half mile or mile events on a car, then certainly uh, an intercooler upgrade uh, is, is recommended. Uh, and also keep in mind that we had fans that gave constant airflow to, these, to, the, to the intercooler that did not increase the speed. As you are topping out fifth gear, uh, the air velocity, air pressure on the front of the car increases a lot more. So you're actually going to see better cooling results uh, on the road, especially in something like fifth gear, uh, than than you would with um, with just uh, you know fans uh, in a dyno room. But uh, I wanted to show that that indeed the torque is is higher um, in, when you load the engine more, and I think that that's a that's a very interesting observation. So that's uh, that's the summary of of our findings here. Now, where do we go from here? Uh, the we found out that using E30 fuel, we're really maximizing the OEM fuel system. So keep in mind, this car has stock high pressure fuel pump, stock low pressure fuel pump, and no additional MPI. So my suspicion is that we can actually gain some, especially some additional torque, excuse me, with, with the addition of MPI. So before we bolt anything else on, on E30 fuel, uh, we're gonna throw on MPI on the vehicle and see if we can, uh, if we can make more power since we're just at the limit of, of the fuel system, uh, even with the OEM turbo and just the exhaust um, with uh, E30 fuel. So stay tuned for that.